Okay, today we're going to have an introduction to function notation. Functions is, is a large area of maths. Today we're just going to have a look at some of the notation. Not many new skills today actually, just some new vocabulary and maybe a different way of writing it. So we want this to explore this idea of something being a function of x. Now a function of x means when you do something to a number that we're going to call x, a variable. So the function might be to square it, or it might be to cube it, or double it, or add three. Those are all functions. And there's a few different ways of writing it. Many of them use the letter f for function. So sometimes you see this notation, f colon x, 2x. That would mean the function of x is 2x, or double the x. Or you might see this notation more commonly, f brackets x equals 2x. That means the same thing. So it means the function of x is to multiply x by 2. And there's a whole host of functions we can have. This tends to get abbreviated when we're saying it. Rather than a function of x, we tend to call it f of x. So if I talk about f of x, it means a function of x. So I'm going to go with this notation here, but you may see others. And really, we're just going to do some basic substitution. So I've got two examples here. f of x equals x squared. So the function of f equals x squared. And the second one, we often use the next, just the next letters in the alphabet. So we start with f, so I'm going to use g next. So g of x, that's a different function, is x plus 2. So really, this function is square the input. This function is add 2 to the input. It's a good idea to think of functions as inputs and outputs. That works quite well. This notation is quite neat, because if I now put f of 2, that basically means substitute 2 as your input into this function. So the x has changed to a 2. So here again, the x is going to change to a 2. So f of 2 is 2 squared, which is 4. f of 10 would therefore be 100, 10 squared. f of negative 3 would be 9, negative 3 squared. So it's just a notation, really, for substitution. I can do the same with this example here. So g of x equals x plus 2, really simple numbers. So g of 2 would equal 2 plus 2, which is, of course, 4. g of 10 would be 12. I'm not showing the work in there. We can do that. g of negative 3, add on 2, would be negative 1. So really, no new skills there. It's just substitution, but we're using this function notation. That's what I want you to get used to. There are extra things we can do called composite functions and inverse functions. I'm just going to briefly touch on composite functions here. So if we have something like f of g of x, what that means is you do the g function first. You start with the one closest to the x and then do the f function on the output from the g function. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to use these two functions here. So f of x is x squared. g of x equals x plus 2. And I'm going to do f of g of 3. So f of g of 3. So g of 3 would be 3 plus 2, which will be 5. And then I use this output as the input into my f function. So I do the g function first and then the f function. So I do f of the output here of 5, and that was squared. So that's going to be 25. So f of g of x, I simply do the g function to get 5, and then substitute the new value 5 into the f function to get 25. I've changed the order here. I've got the same functions, but I've changed the order. I've got g of f of x. So g of f of 3. So the f function of 3 is squaring it. So f of 3 is 9. And then I input this 9 into the g function, the second function. So g of 9, 9 plus 2 is 11. And so this is just basically repeating what we've done, f of g of x. And you can have as many of these as you want. One important point to point out here before we finish is that f of g of 3 was 25, g of f of 3 was 11, so the order is important.